the gospel according to St. Matthew chapter 12, verse 33. Either make the tree good and his fruit good, or else make the tree corrupt and his fruit corrupt, for the tree is known by his fruit. All right, I want to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahasham Yahweh Shai, Bahasham Rahakwadash. Yahweh is the true name of the Heavenly Father in the Holy Tongue. Yahweh Shai is the true name of the King and Savior of Israel. And Rahakwadash is the Holy Spirit, which is the Comforter. Double honors the apostles and elders of Great Millstone for leading by example in these last days. And Shalom to the hopeful elect. Are you Aki and making your bodies a living sacrifice? Now, through the Spirit, the name of this lesson is The Tree is Known by His Fruit. And I just want to go into how you have a lot of people that claim to believe in the Most High. They claim to believe in the scriptures, but their fruits are rotten. They have absolutely no business claiming to be servants of the Lord because, as Yahweh Shai said, the tree is known by his fruit. Now, I want to get this in Mark real quick to prove that the trees represent people in the scriptures. This is the gospel according to St. Mark, chapter 8, verse 24. And he looked up and said, I see men as trees walking. And this is a great precept to go into. For example, Genesis, the third chapter, where it talks about the different trees among the garden. That represents different men, different bloodlines, different seeds. And spiritually, there are different seeds on the earth right now. There are good trees and they are corrupt trees, and they bring forth good fruit and corrupt fruit. Now, let me get back to this Matthew, because Yahweh Shai is breaking down the difference between the good and corrupt tree. Let me start at verse 30. This is St. Matthew chapter 12, verse 30. He that is not with me is against me. And he that gathereth not with me scattereth abroad. Now, who's gathering with Yahweh Shai? When you read Baruch, the fourth chapter, it tells you that the elect is being gathered from the east to the west by the word of the Holy One. The men that are doing the gathering with Yahweh Shai are the men that are coming out of the scriptures, that are breaking down the scriptures properly. You have a lot of people that claim to believe in the Lord and they're doing the Lord's work and they're winning souls and saving souls and they love Jesus, yada, yada, yada. But they don't do anything precept upon precept, line upon line. They're not bringing out the scriptures correctly. So what are they doing? They're scattering abroad. The more you spread false doctrine, the more you're scattering sheep of Yahweh Shai. You're doing a disservice to him. And the scripture says this, he that is not with me is against me. And he that gathereth not with me scattereth abroad. So if you're not teaching the word directly and correctly, no gimmicks, no thrills, just the pure word. If you're not doing that, then you're scattering. And that goes to all of these people, these Israelites that know that they're Israelites, these Israelites that are teaching Christianity and Islam and all manner of wickedness. All of these people are corrupt trees. It's going to tell you, verse 31, wherefore I say unto you, all manner of sin and blasphemy shall be forgiven unto men, but the blasphemy against the Holy Spirit shall not be forgiven unto men. And whosoever speaketh the word against the Son of Man, it shall be forgiven him, but whosoever speaketh against the Holy Spirit, it shall not be forgiven him, neither in this world, neither in the world to come. And the world to come is talking about the kingdom of heaven. The Israelites that reject the gospel, they're going to be called least in the kingdom of heaven. It tells you in Matthew, the fifth chapter, the 17th and 18th verse, it tells you that the men that teach other men to not keep the commandments, they're going to be called least in the kingdom. There is going to be a hierarchy in the kingdom of heaven. Yes, according to prophecy, all Israel shall be saved. And when you go into Isaiah, the 60th chapter, it tells you, my people shall all be righteous. There's not going to be a wicked Israelite in the kingdom, but there are going to be low Israelites. There are going to be people that forsook the Lord, that spoke against the Holy Spirit, people that scoffed against the doctrine. These people are not going to be forgiven because ultimately they were set up from the foundation of the earth to be rejected. They're the dross of the nation of Israel. Right now, the Most High is making up his jewels. Like it tells you in Malachi, he's purifying us through afflictions. He's purifying us through this doctrine, through this gospel. This word is a fire. It's also likened unto water. So if you reject fire, which is a cleansing agent, and you reject water, which is a cleansing agent, you're not purified. You're not sanctified. You're just somebody that's going to be destroyed and you're going to come back totally ashamed of yourself. And this really speaks to these jakes that claim to believe in the word because they're the ones that are handling the scriptures deceitfully. They know that our people are drawn to this book. They know that our people have a spiritual connection to the father and they're using that to feed themselves. Matter of fact, let me get that real quick. And then come back to that Matthew. This is the book of Ezekiel, chapter 34, verse 7. Therefore, ye shepherds, hear the word of Yahweh. As I live, saith the Lord Yahweh, surely because my flock became a prey and my flock became meat to every beast of the field, because there was no shepherd, neither did my shepherds search for my flock, but the shepherds fed themselves. 
the shepherds fed themselves and fed not my flock. And that's exactly what's going on. Yahweh told Apostle Peter, if you love me, feed my sheep, feed my lambs. He told him that three times. So you can know a tree by its fruits. You can know someone that loves Yahweh by who's feeding the flock. These people, the scripture says, the shepherds fed themselves. They're feasting on the ignorance of our people. The people in these harlot houses, which these people call churches, they're actually chapels in the scriptures. They're, Jeremiah referred to them as harlot houses. That's where you go to commit spiritual and physical adultery cheating on the heavenly father these women cheating on their husbands there's nothing but just lewd behavior and mischievousness going on in these harlot houses and these people know all of these pastors know who the israelites are it's 2021 the word has gone out all of these people have had uh their parishioners come to them and ask them hey are we the israelites is it true jesus is black is it true what those guys are saying on the corner these people know the truth but they've now taken the truth and twisted and demonized us and now the truth is evil spoken of like it tells you in peter let me get that real quick i want to come back to this matthew this is the second epistle of apostle peter chapter two and i'm gonna start at the top but there were false prophets also among the people even as there shall be false teachers among you who privily shall bring in damnable heresies even denying the lord that bought them and bring upon themselves swift destruction and that's right that's what's coming to these people that mislead the lord's flock a swift destruction you can see judgment going out you can see we're in the last days and these people plan with the lord they have a very rude awakening coming to them verse two and many shall follow their pernicious ways by reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of and that's exactly what we see all of the people that are mangling the scriptures and lying about yahweh shai and his servants that are misrepresenting the doctrine that are telling their congregation to not listen to those hebrew israelites you have people saying don't listen to those israelites they bring out too many scriptures how there's no such thing as too many scriptures what what type of madness is that but the scripture says by reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of and yahweh i told you that's how you're going to know who my servants are these people that are hated of them in the world the way of truth is going to be evil spoken of it says verse three and through covetousness shall they with feign words which feign means fake pretend facade through feign words make merchandise of you whose judgment now of a long time lingereth not, and their damnation slumbereth not. So the false prophets, these people that are corrupt trees, that bring forth corrupt fruit, they're making merchandise of their congregation. They're Listen, every time these people host an event, whether it's an Israelite that's having some kind of party, hip-hop Passover, or it's a Christian pastor that has some kind of event, he looks at every single member of his congregation and he sees dollar signs over their head. He sees like the like a 3D image, a hologram of a dollar sign hanging above their head. That's how they look at their congregation. They are not in this for the Lord. They're not trying to glorify Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. Most of them don't even call on the name. Most of them will tell you that the, the name of the Lord doesn't matter. His name matters. His title matters. He's deacon this, he's pastor this, he's apostle that. His name matters, but the Lord's name, you can call him whatever. You can call him Jesus, Yeshua, Yeshaya, Yeshua, Yeshua. They don't care at all about the sufferings of Yahweh Shai Mashiach, and they especially don't care about the gathering of the elect. And again, as we read, Yahweh Shai said, those that are not gathering with him scattereth abroad. Now, let me get back to this Matthew because it's going to draw a distinction between the good tree and the corrupt tree. This is back in the gospel according to St. Matthew chapter 12, and we read verse 33. Either make the tree good and his fruit good, or else make the tree corrupt and his fruit corrupt. For the tree is known by his fruit. Right, when you walk past a tree and you see a bunch of apples on the ground, you know, okay, this is an apple tree. When you walk past a tree and you see some oranges on the ground, you go, okay, this is an orange tree. A tree is obviously known by its fruit. So when you see a congregation full of people that don't know anything about the Lord, but they've been going to church for 50 years, that's a reflection on a corrupt tree. The pastor is corrupt. That's a reflection on the leadership. Now, you look at any man in Great Millstone, if you've been in Great Millstone for six months, you're doing what? You're breaking down the scriptures, precept upon precept. You're going into the law, the prophecies. You're going into the Hebrew, the Greek. You're breaking down the scriptures with understanding. Why? Because you're a reflection of your teachers. We're all a reflection of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai and the men that he set up. And you could tell who the Lord's dealing with because why? Yahweh Shai said it. A tree is known by his fruit. So if you want to know who the Lord's dealing with, 
Just look at the fruits of the different trees. If you have somebody that's been in church for 50 years and they can't tell you the name of the Lord, they can't tell you anything about the book of Revelation, they can't tell you anything about Genesis. These people can't break down Genesis, the first chapter, the first page, like the first verse. Okay, in the beginning, quote unquote, God created the heavens and the earth. These people have no idea what the word God means. They honor, quote unquote, God with their lips, but they don't even know what the word means, much less how to please him. The heavenly father made that known unto his fruits. Now, this is the book of Sirach in the Apocrypha, chapter 10. I'm going to start at the top. A wise judge will instruct his people and the government of a prudent man is well ordered. As the judge of the people is himself, so are his officers. And what manner of man the ruler of the city is, such are all they that dwell therein. Right. So again, a congregation is a reflection on the leadership, on the pastor, on the judge. The scripture says, as the judge of the people is himself, so are his officers. So again, this goes back to what? St. Matthew, the 12th chapter. The tree is known by his fruit. The judge is known by his officers. You can look at any philosophy and tell whether or not it's productive or completely satanic. Just look at the people that adhere to the doctrine. For example, if you look at democracy, for example, look at politicians. These are corrupt, demonic people. You don't have to study democracy for 20 years to come away with the conclusion that democracy is evil. Just look at the people that believe in democracy. Look at how they behave. It's clearly a degenerate philosophy, whether it's Catholicism. The Catholic Church is an international pedophile ring. That much is clear. So, whether or not you want to study Catholicism and go to a seminary school or a, get a theologian degree, you can just look at the behavior of not only the Catholic priests, but all of the people that cover it up, all of the people that are with this demonic entity. You can tell that it's of a corrupt tree just by looking at the fruits. So if you want to know who has the truth, if you want to know who the Lord's dealing with, all you have to do is look at the fruits. And it's clear that the Lord is dealing with his men that are teaching the commandments and repentance to the nation of Israel, starting with the apostles of Great Millstone on down, who are not only teaching the commandments, but teaching prophecy. Because you can't just tell Jake, look, you're an Israelite, keep the commandments, you got to have fringes, you got to do this, you got to do that. You have to break down who Yahweh Shai really is, not just that he's a so-called black man, but who he really is, what he really stands for. Break down the purpose of the sacrifice. Let Jake know what's really going on. And then he gets built up in the spirit and he's going to want to keep the commandments because he's going to want to please the heavenly father and his only begotten son. So when you look at someone telling you that the commandments are done away with, we don't have to keep that anymore. That, that's the Old Testament. That's clearly a corrupt tree and they're going to bring forth corrupt fruits. Look at any neighborhood that has a plethora of black churches. It's obvious that Christianity is a corrupt tree just by looking at any neighborhood that has a bunch of churches in it, which again, those are harlot houses according to the scriptures. We're the actual church. We're the actual temple that the Heavenly Father dwells in. This is the third temple right here, the building of Yasharala. Now, this is the book of Isaiah, chapter 3, verse 12. As for my people, children are their oppressors and women rule over them. O my people, they which lead thee cause thee to err and destroy the way of thy paths. And this is manifold when it says children are our oppressors. This goes into literally there are children that terrorize the so-called black community, but also it goes into the Edomites. They're spiritually children. They're, they have absolutely no sense of accountability or responsibility. And these are the people that are ruling the earth right now. Going back to Job 9 and 24, the earth was given into the hand of the wicked, but it also says what? And women rule over them. And that is no more present than the so-called black church. You can go to any so-called black church and you see women are ruling, man. It's the, it's complete opposite of the scriptures. They don't have any sense of submission to their husbands. And that causes what? This is 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 5. Having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. From such turn away. From such turn away. For of this sort are they which creep into houses and lead captive silly women laden with sins led away with diverse lusts. And this is exactly what happens with Christianity or any philosophy that's of the world. You have a charismatic leader who speaks nothing but lies and it attracts a bunch of women. And then the women attract simps, beta males, weirdos, all of these people that follow behind women. And then the end result is what? A bunch of confusion, a bunch of mayhem, a bunch of adultery. You got this guy sleeping with this guy's wife. The pastor gets this person pregnant who it's just so much confusion and madness going on. And any sane man could take 
one look at the so-called black church and see this is this is a bunch of corrupt trees bringing forth corrupt fruit. There's nothing righteous about the so-called black church, which is why there's a mass exodus of our people leaving these harlot houses. And it all goes back to them recognizing, wait a minute. All I see is rotten fruit everywhere. It's a rotten fruit here, rotten apples, rotten oranges, rotten pears. Everything is rotten. So obviously there's something wrong with this tree. This tree is producing nothing but rotten fruit. And Yahawashai, he called it on the money, man. You can know a tree by its fruits. This is the book of Jeremiah, chapter 12, verse 10. Many pastors have destroyed my vineyard, which the Lord's vineyard is the nation of Israel. You can read about that in Isaiah, the fifth chapter. That's the olive tree that the Lord is dealing with. They have trodden my portion underfoot. They have made my pleasant portion a desolate wilderness. And that's what these pastors do. They make our people completely barren. When you go into Micah, it tells you, let, let me get it real quick. This is the book of Micah, chapter three, verse one. And I said, here, I pray you, O heads of Jacob and ye princes of the house of Israel, is it not for you to know judgment? Now, the heads of Jacob and the princes of the house of Israel is talking about the leadership, these so-called celebrities, these so-called pastors, these so-called democratic politicians, all of these people that our people look up to, mainly the two thirds. The two thirds look up to this dross, this low level vibration that's being put out by these people that are so-called leaders, so-called influencers. All of these people are considered the heads of Jacob and they're going off. It's going to tell you. Verse two, who hate the good and love the evil, who pluck off their skin from off them and their flesh from off their bones, who also eat the flesh of my people and flay their skin from off them, and they break their bones and chop them in pieces. And that flesh goes into understanding, knowing who you are. When you read the book of Ezekiel, the 37th chapter, it tells you that that living water is going to put the flesh back on us, which is exactly what's happened. We have our nationality back. We have the understanding of our culture, which is the law, statutes, and commandments of the Heavenly Father. But the heads of Jacob and the princes of the house of Israel, they're telling our people, look, we're not the Israelites. I mean, we are. I mean, I guess the, the real Jews might be a people of color. I mean, who knows? I mean, we don't really, they're just on some, we have to keep these people dark and blind as long as possible because that's what's going to bring in the most money. They only care about fiat currency. They only care about lining their pockets. They don't care about lacing Jake up with the truth, letting them know what's about to happen because all holy hell is about to break loose on the planet earth. So these are basically dumb dogs. Like it tells you in Isaiah, let me get that real quick. This is the book of Isaiah chapter 56. Verse 10, his watchmen are blind. They are all ignorant. They are all dumb dogs. They cannot bark, which the word dumb means an inability to speak. It doesn't mean stupid, which you are stupid if you're going against the Heavenly Father. That's really the worst decision a person can make. That's a horrible life choice. But the scripture says they're dumb dogs. They cannot bark. These people can't go into the scriptures and break down prophecy. It wasn't given to them. They were set up to deceive. What did the Heavenly Father say? The deceived and the deceiver are his. That's in the book of Job. So at the end of the day, these people were set up to be destroyed the same way that the elect was set up to follow the lamb whithersoever he goes. These people were set up to follow Satan and these false prophets. It says they are all dumb dogs. They cannot bark, sleeping, lying down, loving to slumber. Yea, they are greedy dogs, which can never have enough. And they are shepherds that cannot understand. They cannot understand, meaning there's no way for them to get it. You could talk to Jake till you're blue in the face. They're not going to understand that the Lord's name doesn't begin with the letter J, that the letter J is less than 400 years old. You have Jake actually say, well, I, I mean, that's that's the only Jesus I know. They Like they'll sit there and try to rationalize. How can a man who walked the earth 2000 years ago have a name that was created less than 400 years ago? They can't even make it that far. The Lord does not want them to call on his holy name. So you can't you can't get mad at Jake. You can't twist Jake's arm. It just is what it is. I want to get this in Psalms. This is the book of Psalms, chapter one. And I'm going to start at the top. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of Yahweh, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. So the men that delight in the law of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, the men that meditate on the commandments day and night, it says he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. Now, if someone doesn't delight in the law, if they scorn in the law, if they're one of these people that says, well, look, we ain't got to keep that commandment. That's, that's the Old Testament. What, uh, uh, 
These type of people are corrupt trees. They're not trees planted by water. They're trees in the middle of the desert. They're not going to grow. And you could see it. You could see right now that wisdom and knowledge being the stability of our times. You could see who's not even worried about taking any type of injection, who's not even worried about what's going to happen with the economy. We already know. We understand the end of a thing. These people are still trying to figure out some way to bring back the 90s. These people are still trying to find some way to have the so-called white man pat them on the head and tell them a good job. It's okay. We're going to keep murdering you. We're going to keep incarcerating you, but we might lock up an officer every once in a while. It's okay, nigger. You know, that's what they seek for. They're, Jake is on social media crying right now because a murderer might possibly go to prison for murdering you. Like, what what type of time are you on where you don't want the kingdom of heaven? You don't want to get out of here. You don't want to rule over your enemy. You don't want to have this devil have the authority to even think uh, man, listen, in the kingdom of heaven, no heathen is going to put their hands on an Israelite. No heathen is going to ever murder an Israelite. You're not going to have to tune into a trial and figure out whether or not the murderer of your brother, the murder of your son is going to get get justice or get like, come on, man. This is clearly we're clearly at the end of America. And if you're not taking heed to the scriptures, you're going to be destroyed with this place. All right. Now we open with Matthew and we're going to close and Matthew, this is the gospel according to St. Matthew chapter 7, and we're going to start at verse 13. Enter ye in at the straight gate. And this word straight here is spelled S-T-R-A-I-T, which means a position of difficulty. It doesn't mean straight ahead, which you should keep your eyes single and go straight ahead. But this is talking about a position of difficulty. This word here, straight, means there's going to be a path set before you that's not going to be easy. You're not supposed to cop out. You're not supposed to take the easy way out. You're supposed to enter at the straight gate. It says, for wide is the gate and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction and many there be which go in thereat. So the way to be destroyed is to follow the crowd. It tells you in the law to not follow a multitude to do evil. So Yahawashai, again, he's reinforcing the law. He's not telling you to ignore the law. He's actually referencing it. He says, because straight is the gate and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life and few there be that find it. Right. This world is for many. But the world to come is for few. The kingdom of heaven is not for everybody. It's for the elect of the nation of Israel. Everyone else is either going to be destroyed or go into slavery. That is what it is. Verse 15. Beware of false prophets, which come unto you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. Ye shall know them by their fruits. Ye shall know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes of thorns or figs of thistles? Even so, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit, but a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit, neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Every tree that bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. Wherefore, by their fruits ye shall know them. Now, that's the judgment for a corrupt tree to be hewed down and cast into the fire. That goes into the thermonuclear missiles that are going to be pelting Babylon the Great. Every square inch of this country is going to be completely wiped off the face of the earth. You're not going to be able to recognize any square inch of America. You're not going to be able to fly over and see, well, look, I went to high school there. That's where I got my first. You're not going to be able to identify any part of this country. It's going to be completely destroyed. And all of you that are not of the elect, you're going to be destroyed in that lake of fire. You're going to get burnt up. You are a corrupt tree that has not brought forth any good fruit, and you're going to be destroyed. There's a judgment for being a false prophet. There's a judgment for playing games with the Lord. There's a judgment for lying to Israelites about who they are and what they're supposed to do in these last days. There's a judgment that's coming for all of this, man. So for all of you that are of the hopeful elect, you could be a good fruit. You could be part of that good vine that the Heavenly Father is actually dealing with. So hold fast until the Lord comes back. So Abaratazadis was edifying. I want to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahasham Yahweh Shai, Bahasham Rachakwadash, double honest, the apostles and elders of Great Millstone, and Shalom to the hopeful elect.